can uh, move the water station rack into the bathtub and then I'm going to move this rack with all the reef equipment and garbage um, into the bathroom and then move my wife's bookcase behind the door and that'll open everything up. Um, I did a little bit of cleaning last night in here because I was just getting sick of having to step over everything and so I just went ahead and cleaned it up um, so I can at least move around and get things in and out easier. And I'm pretty sure you guys already saw it. I brought the other 120 gallon um, tank in here. Um, if you missed what I was saying uh, in one of my other videos, what I was going to be doing with a second 120, this is what I'm going to do with it. Um, this is obviously going to be the uh, display tank um, slash grow out tank and then the frag tank. And then you know I got the Rubbermaid sump over here. This is going to be a enormous show refugium. So that's what I'm going to be doing with this 120. Um, I bought this tank just specifically for us to move when we were moving because it's easier to move than my tank that I have set up right now. So I was going to use this just to house the corals in um, until we moved and got to the new house and I got my new tank built. Um, so I got it really cheap because the tank is not in that great a shape. Um, I mean the seams are okay. I mean even those aren't the greatest though but <coughs> it's hard to show on camera yeah that doesn't do anything but it's hard to show on camera but this tank is scratched up really 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 bad um, I mean this isn't just water haziness this is scratches I mean the tank is is beat to death so I tried to sell it really cheap with the tank in the stand and I mean basically nobody wants the thing and I get it um, I'm kind of stuck with it now, so I'm going to use it. It's going to be a refugium. I don't really need it to be that pretty. Um, and I, I think once the water, it's full of water and I get the glass cleaned real good with a razor blade, I'll be able to, uh, I think it'll end up being somewhat clear. Um, like I said, it's just going to be a refugium. Um, but yeah, so my plans with it are to do just what I'm saying, turn it into a refugium. I'm actually going to put um, like a egg crate divider about here. I'm going to put all the catamorpha over here, that way it doesn't get all strung up into the calerpa and whatnot. So I'm going to have all the uh, catamorpha in this section when I put the uh, egg crate baffle in there. Um, so the egg crate will still allow for good water flow, and but also keep it somewhat separated from the calerpa side of the tank. Uh, so this will just be strictly cato over here, there won't be a sand bed or anything. On this side, no, that'll be cato, I, th I think I said that right though. Um, on the other side of the baffle, I'm going to be doing the uh, calerpa, uh, probably some mangroves. Um, I'm going to set up a little like mini aquascape because I think I'm going to put the anemone in here because um, I really don't like having the anemone in with like my SPS dominated tank because once it moves, <coughs> once it gets like in the in the mood to kind of move around, it stings everything and uh, it ruins a lot of corals. So I'm going to probably put the uh, anemone in to the refugium but we'll see so that's what uh, I'm gonna be doing with this tank it's just gonna be a refugium I'm just gonna be using uh, two of these lights and this is from when I was moving I still have everything wrapped up when I was packing but I have a couple of these LED flood lamps So I got two of these LED flood lamps that I'm going to put over the refugium. So, yeah. I think it, actually I'm using one of these right now over my current refugium and it works really, really well. So, I know that'll work and I think uh, just two of those should be fine for a refugium anyways. But we'll see. So anyways guys, that's the update for today. I will come and uh, show you guys once I get the stand thing built for this and into the bathtub and I get things moved around in here. So we're, uh, we're coming along, finally. Uh, once the mess was cleaned up, it really put into perspective just kind of how quick I feel like I'm moving now. When I had the shit laying all over the place, I kind of felt like I was getting nowhere. But anyways, um, yeah, I'm gonna probably plumb the returns and everything too today because I got plenty of time. So, not working. <laughs> Work van's out there today. We're using my truck today. All right, guys, later on.
All right, right here I'm just kind of showing you the uh, measurements I took in order to cut that plywood for the bathtub. All right, guys, bathtub. so uh, be moving the water station. I pumped all the water out of both tanks. I just drained the 65 into the 35 and used the pump to fill up two barrels so I can contain all the water. I just got done building the platform for the uh, for the water station to sit on in the bathtub. I built kind of kind of like you build an aquarium stand. The front, I built like a subframe that's underneath it, a two by four frame that's underneath it. And on the back side where I had to cut and notch it out for the soap tray, I put three peg legs that are touching the bottom of the tub. That way it'll support the weight a little better over there because the front side's completely supported by the front of the tub. But uh, it didn't come out too bad. Hopefully, uh, no, it all fits, but it's strong. I mean, I was jumping on it just to make sure. I mean, it ain't going nowhere. So, sweet. We're going to go ahead and uh, put the tanks up here. I don't feel like doing this, but I guess it's got to get done, huh? But yeah, it feels, uh, I'm just walking around to see, see what it feels like. It feels pretty good. I'm not worried about it. I don't think. Time will tell, I guess. Uh, yeah, we're going to uh, move this sucker. So inside of this hobby, I've done a lot of things that are rough. And this by far was my biggest nightmare, getting this piece of shit rack moved. I would never, ever recommend anybody buy one of these racks. It does not stay together at all. This was a nightmare. But nonetheless, it's moved. And it's up here. And I'm done for the night. We'll see it tomorrow when everything is back on it and full of water but I need to take a break because I am beyond frustrated right now we'll see you guys tomorrow alright guys so in my true fashion I cannot wait and I went ahead took a breather and got back to work on everything um, it's everything's hooked back up uh, the top tanks full of water right now um, yeah it's done this was uh, <laughs> definitely a defeating feeling doing this um, this whooped my ass this really really whooped my ass good but uh, it's done so I'm gonna leave the water in the top tank tonight I just want to make sure it holds <laughs> so I'm gonna leave it up there you know full of water well somewhat full of water and we'll see how this looks in the morning, but I am done for tonight. I am whipped in more ways than one. So we will see you guys in probably next week's update. Alright guys, later on. Alright guys, kind of a last minute update of uh, for this weekend anyways. And then I think I'm done for this weekend. Um, I added a strainer to the frag tank uh, drain line. Uh, I found it in one of my reef boxes. Um, so what I got going on right now is I'm plumbing the return lines. I took a nice good long break and I had to work this weekend at a home show. But everything's still doing good here with the water station. Um, I think I finally figured out what I'm going to do with the RO system. Um, the water line for the float valve is too short to reach the RO system on the ground. But uh, I think I know what I'm going to do with it now, so uh, we'll see that in the next update. Because I'm not going to do that now, because I'm not going to need to make RO for a little bit. Um, so as you guys know, I plumbed the return lines for the frag tank and the main display. Um, I still need to plumb everything for this tank. But I'm really not looking forward to plumbing this tank, because it's long runs. And the, uh, the stand is made out of 4x4 block wood and uh, I'm gonna have to drill a hole through the side of the cabinet big enough for one and a half inch PVC because I'm gonna be dumping both one inch drain lines into one one and a half inch PVC to run to the sump for a drain there's not gonna be high flow going through here but I wanted to definitely utilize both the drains in case some algae actually got into the overflow and clogged one of them so anyways uh, that's that um, I haven't done anything with that tank yet. I'm just not looking forward to plumbing that long run right now. 
Um, but here's the return for the frag tank. When I got this tank, it was uh, it was drilled kind of wonky as it was, so I'm just kind of using what's here. Um, so we're coming out on a street 90, and I'm going into a 90, into a 45 to run the length of the tank here. We come in a 90, and then we run down, obviously here, to another 90 where it goes underneath the stand here. I tried to kind of tuck the plumbing underneath the uh, frag tank a little bit because there's a little lip, and uh, it uh, didn't turn out all that great. So uh, what I did is I mounted the... Uh, uh, what is this thing? Uh, the manifold for the tank system. Um, I think I, 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 I did. I made up my mind on how I'm going to run the manifold. It's going to be on two separate pumps. Uh, one manifold is going to control the tanks, and the other manifold is going to control the accessories like the chiller, skimmer, and uh, reactors. So uh, these are the tanks right here. Um, you'll see that there's a fourth one that'll gonna, that's going to be empty because I only have three tanks right now. This one's going to be empty, but this is going to be for a coral quarantine tank, um, which is going to more than likely be a 40 breeder that I'm going to put on the bottom here. Um, and you know, hang a little LED light or something like that. But I definitely want to start quarantining the corals before I add them to the main system because <laughs> that's not going to work, actually. Now that I'm thinking about it, a 40 breeder is not going to work here. I'm not going to be able to drain it anywhere. Anyways, I'll figure that out later. But uh, I definitely learned my lesson as far as uh, quarantine, quarantining corals. Um, so I'm going to have a hell of an extensive quarantining process for my corals from now on. I'm just tired of dealing with bullshit. So anyways, you can see here I got a, a run kind of running diagonally across the bottom of the stand here. Um, that is for the main display tank. And for right now I just kind of have it popped up. I have a 90 degree elbow on it because it held this piece of PVC up for me while I measured the distance under the tank. So. But anyways, the uh, main um, display tank line is going to come up here. I'm going to use a piece of flexible PVC or uh, vinyl tubing because I haven't really figured out where I want to put this Ocean's Motions. And uh, so I'm going to probably be moving it around and I'd rather put it on a flexible tube uh, rather than hard piping it right now. I kind of like this location right now because this thing, as it sweeps, it's going to do the entire tank. I mean, I, like I said, these things are highly controllable, so I can get this thing to do whatever I want it to do and cover as much area as I want. So I'm kind of liking this area, even though it's kind of an eyesore. Up at the front of the tank, um, I think it's just going to end up being more uh, beneficial in the long run. Um, I'm ultimately going to be pretty much the only one looking at the tank, and with it being on a flexible vinyl tube, I will be able to move it towards the back of the tank if I have friends or you know local reefers come over that buy coral or whatever and I want to really display the tank nicely I can just push that to the back of the tank so uh, that's uh, that tank return plumbed it's just stubbed right now um, I gotta push this back against the wall again I kinda got my drain line all cockamamie right now um, and then so that's uh, ball valve one uh, ball valve two is the frag tank and I have that coming. They're all coming off 90s. Um, this one I have to support still um, with some plumber strap. But that one's going to the back of the wall, going up on 290s and following the run back ultimately over here. Um, I'm watching Jim, Jim Stein's new uh, tank build. Pretty sweet build. Valves are kind of uneven um, going across the board here. My initial thought was I was going to mount it kind of over here and I was going to make this one short, this one longer, this one longer, this one longer. And I was going to have all the pipes kind of follow each other out, kind of like uh, you would see electrical conduit. But I ended up changing my plan because I wanted these ball valves to be uh, really close to where I could get to them quickly if needed to be. And for easy adjustment and having it right here um, is just going to work out for me. I can make um, a cover panel for this with magnets on it because it's an all steel stand. And I can just pop a magnetic cover on here real quick to hide all this. It doesn't even look all that ugly to me. Um, and like I said, I'm going to be the one looking at the guts of this tank anyways. Um, I'm going to be running the return line, the main one from the pump. I don't know if you guys can see it or not. But it's coming out of the manifold on a 45, coming down. And then we got it going towards the sump on another 45, where I then have it coming out here on a 90, up on another 90, and then... I have 245. I already had this built for something. I don't know what it was for, but it has a union on it and whatnot. But I have 245s that make a 90 that are going to terminate into the sump um, to the return pump, and then I already have a union. So that'll work out nicely. Um, yeah, 
the uh, the height of this stand being so short and the height of this stock tank being so high is making me having to do some pretty weird plumbing shit. But I think it's going to end up uh, working out just fine. And I don't know. To me, guys, I don't I don't know what your thoughts are, but to me, this seems somewhat. I think it looks clean, but I guess that's just me talking. But uh, yeah. Um, I haven't filmed a whole lot of me doing the actual build, um, you know, me wearing the head mount camera and whatnot and setting up the, setting up the secondary camera and doing the, uh, uh, the syncing of the two videos. I just, I don't know if that's something you guys want to see or if you just want to see what it looks like when I'm done with it. So I've just been kind of doing like, I do a bunch of work, show you what's happening so far, do a little updates as I'm doing the work. I'm not actually filming the entire work, but... Uh, let me know if you guys want to see me like doing the entire bit of work on this. Um, I can definitely film that, but I just haven't done that um, right now. So I did that when I was bringing the tank in, and I thought it came out pretty cool. But uh, like I said, I don't know what you guys really want to see. So uh, let me know uh, how you guys want to see this uh, fish room build go, what, how you want to see the content come to you. So anyways, guys, we'll, uh, we'll see you in next... All right, guys, so this is going to kind of conclude uh, this week's update this has been a very long update uh, hopefully you guys stuck through a lot was going on this week and I'm trying to record a little bit more but uh, let's take a look at what we got going on here um, things are cleaning up finally um, I got most of the plumbing done and we'll get into that here um, right now actually um, so the only thing I haven't plumbed is the main tank return that's gonna be used with this vinyl tube here that way I can move that way I can move this motions oceans thing um, or motions oceans whatever this thing is I forgot what it's called now but anyways uh, that way I can move it because I'm not really sure where I want to put this yet and here's my return stub here I just have it stubbed right now just because I'm not hooking this up yet um, everything in this little stock tank is still doing good I gotta fill it with some roadie water it's getting a little bit low salinity's getting a little high um, I had to use one of the caps out of the bulkhead. Anyways, that's not the main plumbing. So you'll see that I have the frag tank return all plumbed. Follows underneath the tray here and goes down the wall back there. And I have it zip tied to the frag tank drain. And I put my manifold here. I know it's kind of unsightly looking, but um, I'm going to actually be building a little cover here with magnets. I think I already mentioned that. Um, let me get my little light here, and I have three lines run so far, I'm not really sure what I'm going to use the fourth one for yet, but uh, this is for the main display, this one here, and you see it runs back there, and I have everything on hangers, not really hangers, it's actually ductwork um, strap, but uh, it's holding it nice and secure, and then the middle line here is for the frag tank, and you can see it... Uh, runs to the back and that's hung to goes up on a 90 and follows the uh, frag tank or goes to the frag tank uh, the third line here goes to the 120 gallon refugium and you'll see I kinda did the same thing I just followed it to the back went up on a 90 went above the frag tank return and followed that line over here so this is to the refugium here and that runs along the back and then does a 90 and here's our return here and I of course used my handy dandy vinyl tubing and that's where I went into the cabinet here oh, I should probably get my light let's see how far I can get it alright so this tank is plumbed uh, maybe a little differently than what most would be used to let's see how much light I can get in there alright that'll work all right, so you'll see, oops, the return line comes in on that vinyl tubing and up into that barb fitting there. I'm only running one return line. The other one over here is going to be capped off. Um, so I'm just going to be running that one. Okay, so let's get into this weird plumbing job here that you guys are probably are looking at. Um, both drains go into a one and a half inch um, PVC T. So both one inches run into this one and a half inch PVC T. And I had to use 245s to get around the uh, the supports for the stand, and then I went out the stand there on a one and a half inch PVC. Now here's where it gets a little wonky. Let me adjust my light. <laughs> That's why I need some film lights. 
here's where it gets a little wonky. The tank is going to drain out on the one and a half inch PVC. We've got it coming up into a 90 and I'm going to be getting another 45 tomorrow and it's going to terminate actually into the frag tank. Um, one, I didn't feel like running a long ass drain line and two, I just don't have the room for a drain line over here. So the plan is to do a little bit lower flow through this return line because I only have a one inch drain for the frag tank. So the plan is um, run a little bit lower flow through this return line that's actually the return line for the frag tank and use this as kind of a return as well to the frag tank and a couple reasons one I didn't feel like running it um, and two I didn't really have the room but the like microorganisms that live in a refugium like the copepods and you know all that crap that live inside of a refugium I think will benefit the corals that are going to be living in this frag tank and they're going to be dumped directly into the into the frag tank without a filter sock and things like that so we'll see how that goes um, this is going to have no problem draining because the Durzo standpipe is going to be this high so that's going to be the water level so that the pressure and the gravity is going to make that drain no problem not even worried about that um, so the majority of the flow for the frag tank will be coming in from the refugium and we're going to have some filtered water coming in from the sump over there and then again I just have this one inch drain here I might put this drain online uh, but we'll see excuse me we'll see how things go but I might put this one online I do have room to run a one inch drain so that's uh, pretty much the plumbing for the system it's a uh, it's a little bit different but I think I'm gonna get some benefits from it but we'll see um, I got enough PVC <laughs> this uh, this has uh, definitely gone over what I was expecting budget wise um, sort of yeah no definitely definitely a little bit more expensive endeavor than I was expecting it to be um, I was thinking you know two or three sticks of uh, PVC and I'd have this room plumbed but hell no that was not the case um, so yeah that's uh, that's pretty much it guys I know this has already been a long enough video so I won't drag it on anymore um, this cabinet here I'll just do a teaser for next week this is going to be the electrical cabinet and we are gonna have dun 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 we're gonna be installing an eight